hello Julie here and welcome to my YouTube channel today I'm going to start a new journal and I'm going to use papers from Denise Bodie for this they are nice sturdy pages so the papers I'm going to use are from a couple of her ranges just let me get this off of here so I've got this one princess for a day from the day Daydream Storybook Collection, Daydream Storybook Collection, another one called Dreams, the Elegance Connection Collection called Refined, Elegance Collection Style, Elegance Collection After the Rain, and Elegance Collection Grace. So the main colours for this journal are mauve, blue, and a bit of green. So that's them. Is it green? Is it green? No. And um, I've also got this page here, which has got some clocks on the back, which I might use for embellishing. And also this page here, which has got some tags and some words and you know, a frame and some flowers. So I'll probably use those two in the decoration of my journal. So I'm going to make this journal 7 inches by 5 inches. So let me, I'm going to have a look and see what part of the page I would like to use and where these things come. So if I cut that at 7 inches, that would be fine. And that would give me that section. Now if I went the other way, would that be 7 inches? I'll just leave that bit and I'll have fairly plain back. I think I'll go that way with that one, this one. Because I can still use this section here for pockets and things like that. So that's one page. Oh no, that's oh, I can have it. seven. Yeah, that's good. Now I can cut it at ten. And that will be my page size in this journal. So a 7 by 5. Quite nice proportions, I think. So I'm going to work my way through these pattern papers, doing exactly the same thing. So I think I'll take this top section here for this one. So 7 inches there. That'll be good. And then I'll trim that off at 10. And then that gives me that purple on the back. And um, that writing is there, so that's the right way up. That goes like that, and that will be that page. I've got lots of nice cut oh, off cuts here to um, create different things with. Now this one, um, I could go that way. What's on the back? I don't know, it's got writing on the back, so I have to... Oh no, it's got sideways writing there, but most of it's that way. So I better stick with that way. Now if I go, the back of it's fairly neutral. If I went seven inches that way, that would be fine. I went seven inches that way. Um, if I go seven inches that way, what do I get? I'll go this way. It doesn't really make much difference on this particular one because I'm going to be cutting through the middle of this frame anyway. So 
So that and now cut that to 10. I've got here one, two, three, and this one is that way up, marks on the back. Okay, so I think I'll go this way for this one. There's seven inches. And ten. Cut this edge off. So which way I go, does it? Which I'll go the seven that way. goes up that way my pattern papers cut I'm going to put um, different papers in between these but for now I'm going to score these at 5 inches just so that I get a nice fold them in. That will that will be my middle page. So now I'm going to play around with the placement of the pages in the journal. I don't want all of the pictures or all of the feature pages in one area. I want to sort of intersperse plain, plainish papers with patterns. Okay. So I'm going to have a bit more of a play around with this and I'm also going to find some papers to go in between here. I don't know whether I'll use coffee stained or avocado dyed or a mixture of both or maybe even just go for white because there is a lot of white in this paper. Oh, no, no there's not. Perhaps I could even find a, um, a pale green or something like that to go with a pale grey. I don't know, but I'm going to have a look and um, when I've got myself sorted out with papers, I'll come back to you. Okay, so I've found some papers that I wanted to use. I've found this sort of like a light grey paper, but um, it's too plain for my liking. So I'm going to take it out of here and I'm going to use this stencil 
It's a floral stencil from Kay's Craft. And I'm just going to stencil all of those pieces, both sides. So, I'm sure that you all know how to stencil or how to add um, ink through a stencil. I'm using a Distress Ink Bundled Stage. Bundled Sage, not Stage. And I'm just using my blending tool and just I'm not going to cover the whole thing I just want bits and pieces of it here and there just to break up that so it's, you know it's not heavy it's just something in the background so I'm going to do this for both sides and um, all over both sheet all the sheets so and um, I don't think you probably need to watch me do that so I'm going to turn the video off and go ahead and do that and when I've finished I'll come back. Okay so I have um, stenciled onto each of my plain papers so that they are not plain anymore and I've also stitched around the edge of each page um, just for a nice bit of a finish. I'm debating whether I should um, distress the edges with my distressing tool or leave them plain. So this is what I've got so far. I think it's coming together quite nicely. I think the colours are blending well. So now I'm going to think about what sort of cover I want to put on it and when I've made that choice I will come back to you and we'll bind this into the cover. Okay so I'm going to do a paper cover and I have cut two, two pieces of pattern paper that are seven and a quarter by eleven I've got that one and that one so this is going to be my front cover and that's going to be well, this is going to be the outside cover and this is going to be the inside cover and I also have cut or well, a piece of this um, paper mill illustration pad 216 GSM cardstock and that I'm going to put between the two for a bit of added, added strength so that will be like that. Well, actually, that will be the front. So that will be like that. So it's quite sturdy. Now, to attach all of these layers, I've cut two pieces of double-sided interfacing. And one will go between the back cover and the cream cardstock. Like that. And one will go on here like that. So I've cut those pieces of interfacing to the same size. So that will be my sandwich and um, to apply this interfacing all I have to do is iron one side down the rough side to the to the paper then peel the top layer off add this next layer of paper and then iron again and um, that will adhere those two pieces of cardstock together. No bubbles, no lifting, no anything. So that will be that. Also the same for the back or for the inside cover. Once I've done that, I will then take it to my sewing machine and stitch around the edges so that um, you know it fits in with the idea of the rest of the pages with the stitching all the way around. Now you can see here that this pokes out and um, sometimes I trim that off but in this particular case I'm going to leave it as it is 
I've made this cover big enough that it will cover that. So that's my, what I'm going to do. I'll go and do that now and when I've got that completed I'll come back. Okay, so there's my cover. Very stiff, very sturdy. So now I'm going to score this. Um, I have got a little mark there at five and a half and I just want to go an eighth of an inch each side of that just to give me a little spine I don't know that that's actually working I think this um, Cover is too thick for me to actually score that. Um, so I need to, so it's 11 inches, and I need to go an eighth of an inch either side of five and a half because I'm just going to put like a small spine in there just to give a little bit of room now put my water there and there fold that up like so and then do the same for this side I had all sorts of trouble trying to fold that second fold. Uh, the trick I think should have been to fold it all before I attached all the layers. I'm going to have to work out a way to fold that up. You can see now how sturdy this cover is. Taking every bit of strength that I've got to actually fold that up. But I think I'm actually getting there. Okay, so I have got a spine of sorts there and that just makes it a bit easier for that to fit in there gives it a bit more shape so that will be my journal cover okay so now what I need to do is stitch this in Okay, now I'm just wondering whether I will just stick with one signature or whether I would break this up into two signatures. So if I did two signatures, what have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, six. If I take three, one, two, Three, I did that, and this. one or two signatures. I think I like the look of two signatures actually. I do. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to 
reorganise my papers and I'm going to create two signatures and I will stitch them in there like so. So I'll go and reorganise my papers and then I'll come back when I'm ready to stitch the signatures into the cover. Okay, so I'm going to create a template for punching my holes in my cover and my and my signatures. So I've cut a, well this is an off cut actually of the paper that of the cardstock that's in between those two papers. Um, it's three inches wide by seven and a quarter inches deep. The width doesn't really matter, that was just the size of the off cut. But I've cut it to the height of the journal. And you can see it's the same height. Now what I'm going to do is mark the middle of this. So seven and a quarter, so half of that is uh, three and a half, three and five eighths. So that's the centre point. And then I'm going to come in from the top an inch and in from the bottom an inch. So I'm going to mark that as the top. And that's my template. I'm going to use that to poke the holes in my cover and my signatures. So I've pushed my signatures back in together and I've held them in place with a clip and now I'm going to position this in the fold. Oh actually that's slightly longer than my cover isn't it? I'll have to try and make sure I get that um, central. Okay, here we go. So let's hold this in place. Now if you fold your um, signature over slightly, you'll find that you'll get a better chance of coming out exactly on the seam. I'm going to push that through quite well. Now, what I think I might do is just put a little mark here, and a little mark here, just to make sure that I keep them in the same spot. Now, I'm going to do the same thing for my top hole. So, and my bottom hole. So there we have our three holes punched in our first signature. I will do the same for this signature so once again I'm going to line my template up and poke my holes through the same spot okay so that's my two signatures now I'm going to do the same for my cover. Now I'm going to go into my cover. I'm going to line my fold up with my mark there that I made. And make sure that I've got that. Oh, the cover is a bit bigger. That's right. That's where this does fit. Okay. So, now I'm trying to make sure I've got that lined up with my first fold there and I'm going to push through that 
I am going to put some lace over this spine so the fact that this is pushing through is not going to be a problem. So that's the holes in the first fold you can see there and I'm, now I'm going to put the holes in this fold and that's where my signatures will go. If you aren't going to put lace you can fold these back in which I will do anyway. Fold them back in like so and then poke your holes through that way and that neatens those holes up and has the bulk of the excess paper on the inside. Okay, so now let's do this one. Line that up there and that up there and poke our hole through there and through there and So there we have all of our holes. They didn't actually line up perfectly, did they? Anyway, so all of my holes have now been punched. I'm going to go off and find what I want to bind, use to bind these into my folder, into my cover, like so. Okay, I'm probably going to go for something fairly fine. I probably am like a crochet cotton. Oh, I've got some waxed thread. I think I'll use that. So I'll collect up all my supplies and I'll come back. Okay, so I've got some waxed thread here and I'm going to use that. Now they say you need about twice your length of the height of your journal. So I'm going to try that. Usually I allow a lot extra and end up wasting it. Now I did have a needle here somewhere. There we go. So I just use this needle. It's a darning needle. And nine times out of ten, whatever I'm threading through will fit through that eye. Let's see, I have got a bigger, bigger eye here. So I guess I'll have to use that one. The trouble is the bigger the eye, the bigger the hole in your journal. So I try to keep that to a minimum, but if the cord is not going to cooperate, well then I haven't got any choice, have I? Perhaps I should have cut that extra after all. The amount of cut off and get this through the needle okay so uh, is there a choice for first or second so you probably all know how to do this so I'll do it the first time and then I'll sew the second signature in off camera so you start on the inside of your signature and at the middle and go through both layers and leave a tail hanging. Then it doesn't really matter whether you go to the top or the bottom but you go to one so through the can, uh, through the cover and through the signature, and pull it right through. Oh, not that far through. So out through the middle hole, 
And so that I don't do that again, I'm going to clip that here. I don't know what's going on today, I'm all fingers and thumbs. So then I'm going to come back up through the top like I did before and pull that through. Then right down to the bottom. And through the bottom hole in the It's not the right piece is that one and pull that through and then back through the middle hole Then we're going to check that they are nice and tight both ways and you can see I've got one coming out one side of this center cord and one coming out the other side of the cord and make sure they're nice and tight and then tie double the knot. You can um, choose to use whatever sort of tying off device you prefer okay so that's our first signature in place okay so i will run through that again and um, hopefully this one goes a bit smoother so cut that off at about twice the length, thread that through our needle, take our signature, make sure we've got it the right way up, something I didn't check for that one but I did manage to do it right, right in through the centre hole and through the same centre hole in the spine I'm going to just clip that in place so I don't pull it through like I did last time then I'm going to go in through the top through the spine and through the signature pull that through then down to the bottom through the signature and through the spine And then back through the center And we want one on each side of this centre. 
make sure that we've got it nice and firm on the outside. There's no loops or bubbles. And then tie our knot. And you can trim these threads off as short as you like, or you can leave them there and you can put it and a charm on the end of them or something like that completely up to you what you do with your strings I'm just going to leave mine there for the moment until I decide what I'm going to do so we now have our journal created So our pages fit nicely within our cover. Our cover is nice and sturdy and everything is going along just great. The cover is very pretty. Doesn't, it's not going to need much um, decoration to finish that off. So there we go. All right. So that um, completes the construction of the journal. So I'll probably finish this video here and when I start to embellish it I'll come back and show you more in the next video. So yeah, thank you for being here with me and watching how I put this together. These papers are beautiful. The, um, the pattern papers from Denise are, well, they're quite sturdy. I'd say they're or maybe 180, 200 GSM, so they're going to hold their shape and they will hold your embellishments that you put on here very nice. These are grey, these papers, the intermittent plain papers, they're just your normal 80 GSM, so they'll be generally more, I'll leave them more for writing um, in most cases. Okay, so that's it for today. Thank you for joining me. And I hope you can join me for my next video. If you're not a subscriber already, I'd love it if you would subscribe to my channel. And um, if you give me a thumbs up or a like or a um, share, whatever you can do, that would be fantastic as well. So thank you and see you next time. Bye.